Hey there everyone, today we're going to learn how to master colors in web. Hope you'll join. Hey everyone, today we're going to be learning about colors. And through this, we're actually going to be learning about a six letter code called hexadecimal. It will be our main tool in understanding how uh, color works on the web, as well as understanding how we look at things on our monitor and why they display the way they do. Let's get started. Before jumping into what hexadecimal is, we're going to go ahead and actually discuss what we're looking at on this page. Now here, uh, I just pulled up the first page that came up when it came to color codes just because you're gonna, I'm hoping you'll find the same tools and will be able to actually follow along with me. So, what we're looking at on the screen is essentially three different codes that all equal the same color. For today, we're going to specifically focus on this code right here, next to hex. The hex is short for hexadecimal, so let's go ahead and figure out exactly what that is. To begin with hexadecimal, first we under have to understand that our monitors, our screens, whatever it be, all display color through a mix of uh, three lights, R, G, and B. Red, blue, and green, each making up a single, three little lights, each making up every pixel on every screen that you see, and with control of those three colors, R, G, and B, we can mix them together based on how bright and non-bright non they are and create colors that trick our eyes into believing we're actually seeing something. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually look at the structure of hexadecimal works and see how we can actually control it. So to break down the structure of a hexadecimal, we can literally think in terms of R, G, B. If you can remember R, G, B in order in your mind, you can understand hexadecimal. So let's actually break this down and I'll go ahead only, okay, so I can, I just have to be really careful. When I mean it literally is in the order of R, G, B, I mean these first two letters or numbers uh, are equal to red, the second two are equal to green, and the last two are equal to blue. With these three values, from zero being black and F being white, in the order of zero, one, two, three, up to nine, then A to F, B. again, zero being the darkest, F being the brightest, we can control these colors or the pixels individually in order in to trick our mind into thinking that there's color there. So just to make sure we everything is clearly understood, we essentially have a system where based on uh, a scale from zero to F, and again, thinking of it of as zero to nine, and then A to F on a single scale. And uh, with that, we can individually control the strength and or tone or hue or saturation, but uh, really just think about the amount of strength you're giving to each one of these little lights that's either red, green, or blue. So with that out of the way, let's actually go ahead and look at this in practice. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit my code. And to start off, let's go ahead and do a black. So for a little shortcut, we can actually condense the hexadecimal down from six codes, th six letters, to three characters. So, for example, if I just put in zero, 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 we get black. Why is that? Each zero that I put in is equal to two zeros to the computer, or at least the browser that compiles the hexadecimal. Now, if I put in zero, F, zero, I would get something that's almost grayish, but still on the dark end. Now, if I put in zero FF, we get a completely different color. So, and the case being here that we completely, 
I guess it doesn't like me doing three hex codes. But what we did here was individually put the green all the way up and put the blue and the red down. And because of that, we have displayed green. So continuing with this logic, we can actually go ahead and switch the zeros, the place of the Fs or the strong uh, color code and change it to red. And like that, with FF0000, we have red. And if we put those two Fs at the end of the six characters, we end up with blue. So if we wanted to go, so like that, we know how to control red, green, and blue. But what if we want a different color? Something in between. What if we want black? What if we want white? Well, with white, again, it's really just six Fs. And with black, it is six zeros. Now, if you want the gray in between, what would you would do is go from zero to one. Oh, uh, one, 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 one. And like that, we are a little higher on the scale from black to white. Now, to continue, let's go ahead and challenge ourselves. Let's try and imagine mixing colors in our head. We have a palette of color in front of us, and we have red paint, green paint, and blue paint. We're going back to preschool and mixing colors. But this time, we're trying to control or uh, imagine what hex code that color is equal to. So in order to properly mix the colors, what we're gonna do is uh, think again like a palette. Let's think in terms of mixing something in front of us. So I'm gonna go for a yellow and what we'll actually find is that it's a little bit different when it comes to the math and scale. Uh, well, just the math behind color in technology. So usually to get yellow, you would mix uh, green and blue. But in this case, what we're gonna find is that we're gonna have to raise the value of red and we're gonna have to raise the value of green with no value for the blue. And like that, we get yellow. Now, in order to get Let's see what happens when we mix the red and the blue. Obviously, we can expect purple in this case. So I'll do DD, 00, DD, and like that. We have something closer to a magenta, but a purple. And finally, let's see what happens if we mix uh, again with the value of D, um, 00, DD, DD. And like that, we have a nice aquamarine the mix of the blue and the green. So when it comes to our, uh, well, hexadecimal, it essentially tr acts as a translation of what we're looking at here, which is RGB. The RGB values, if you would want to mess with those directly, are on a scale from zero to 225, I believe. And with that, uh, you're able to control each pixel individually but I would still recommend hexadecimal over RGB just because it's a nice shorthanded version of controlling this. Alongside this, you'll find that uh, with RGB. Now, for our final subject, we'll touch on HSL, or hue saturation lightness. In some cases, you'll see it as HSB if you're working in Illustrator, but you can still handle HSL or hue, again, hue, saturation, and lightness in uh, Illustrator or a lot of other programs. So essentially what hue, uh, saturation, lightness, or HSL is, is a way to track color in a sense that uh, is more visually cohesive. It's easier to think of in your head, or it's easier to follow if you have a color wheel in front of you. So in this case, we do have something that allows for us to manage uh, or visualize the color in front of us. So if I wanted something to be uh, stronger in, in terms of hue, what I could do, or shift the hue of the color wheel is a better way to think of it. Imagine you're running around a color wheel and just to give you guys a visual real quick, 
I'll go ahead and search one up. And with this oh, color video, we want a color wheel. And with this, you can actually follow this around and just like a circle being 360 degrees, we have 360 hues uh, we can essentially uh, transition through. So if I set my hue at 360, it's not going to let me do anything because the max value is 359. Now, if I set it to zero, we're back in the same spot because we made a full circle. And to finish off, uh, we'll go over saturation, which essentially just moves this up and down. So instead, well, left and right, but instead of 100, let's go 50. And, oh, come on. I just want to change the saturation to 50. Well, this is being a bit more of a pain, but it essentially controls our scale between here and here. So, for example, as you see, when I move this to the right, you see the saturation go up. So, instead of this faded white, we get more saturation of color. And then finally, lightness goes up and down. Lightest being white, darkest being black. So, what are our key takeaways from today? Well, we have hexadecimal, which is an extension of RGB control, a code that allows us to control R, G, and B, so that we can control the color on our displays. Then we have HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lightness, which uh, equal to hex hex hexadecimal uh, allows for us to control colors in a more intuitive way. The, what you should really take away from learning these codes is understanding color, color theory, and how we can uh, really just get to stain the idea of color into our heads. What we really want to do is be able to, uh, to just predict a color based on a certain color code. Obviously, you won't always have to do that because we have tools and technology that help us with that. However, knowing some shorthand things will have help a lot through your development uh, lifetime and can help with a lot of front end work. So hopefully today has been helpful for you in understanding color within web and I hope you'll join us next time for our next episode on display properties and position in CSS. See you next time.